Welcome to the Straight From The Heart Show. I'm Yitam Marmaraz. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Where we are in Europe, it's actually a sunny afternoon. And today I've got an amazing guest who's a great friend of mine. I connected with this gentleman, I think it was 2015. He was one of the guys that actually kicked my butt <laughs> where I am today. His name is Mark Britzka, and he's from MB Inspiration, all the way from Germany. I'm so excited about this interview. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. This is awesome. I'm so honored to be part of your show. Thank you. Well, as I do on my show, usually I get the, the guests to introduce them themselves, tell us a bit more about themselves before we get cracking on and picking your brains. <laughs> How does that sound? So I'm basically a coach for people who want to be successful, who want to have their breakthrough. Usually people have, who are familiar with that industry and who are familiar with ideas from personal development. They have some successes and then they run against some kind of a wall, some kind of where they don't know how to break through, how to get to the next level. And that's where I help people to really come to that point where they understand how they can perform so much better, how they can get to the next level, how they can increase their awareness so that they rise and shine, basically. And so I do that and also I do seminars all over the world, um, coachings all over the world and my field also is communication, so how to communicate effectively, efficiently. So that's my, my profession, yeah. How, how did you get into that profession, Mark? So it started basically, I think when I was 16 years old, the secret came out. And that was when everything shifted because then I really started to have this desire to learn more about it. So the secret is a wonderful first step, but it could not be the ending to my story. It couldn't be the ending to my my desire to learn and to know more. And I thought, if there's something out there like that, who else knows this? What else is there? So this was this 90 minute, two hour movie. And I thought, well, I have to find out more about it. And that's when the journey started. And so that's now, I think, almost 10 years ago. So, and it has been quite an adventure ever since. Wow. Never stopped studying, never stopped learning, never stopped teaching. And now doing the coaching and doing the seminars, is, it's really what I want to do. And I love it. Wow. Do you know what? The secret that, that really starts everyone off, it started me off on my journey. And what I love about Mark is his, his mentors have practically been my kind of mentors. We come from the kind of, same kind of lineage through our coaching. And through the secret, I ended up looking into Bob Proctor. And he's a great mentor of mine. And how, how would you describe Bob Proctor's effect on you? Uh, he was huge. So I think he was the one that stood out in the secret somehow. I think he was the one that really got us thinking and got us into the idea that there's more. And when he explained, I wanted to have more of him. And I actually made up in my mind that I wanted to meet him one day. And suddenly one day, a couple of years later, he came to Germany. I went there. Then I went to Dallas, Texas, just for a weekend, I would have a seminar to give where I had 100 students in the week afterwards. But I flew there from Germany just for that seminar to go there. So it was a huge impact. And now he does live streams and that's really awesome. I love his work. I love his effectiveness. I love his passion for what he does. He's really good at it. And so he's a huge part of my journey too. Um, like so many others, I really enjoy working with him and, and having, not working with him because I don't work with him, but, but having learned from him. So, yeah. It's great. You can't go wrong with somebody who's got over 50 years, to be precise, 57 years of experience in the industry, in the field. So, and he walks around with Think and Grow Rich daily. That's his daily Bible. And that's something that I've taken on board and that's become part of my daily life. And that's awesome. There's my Bible here. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that book. It really, it's really the starting point of personal development. So when you think about it from Andrew Carnegie, who was once or maybe under some criteria, he's still the, the richest man who has ever walked on earth, who has 
given his wisdom to Napoleon Hill, who then made all this research, he really started not only the industry, but he started the whole idea of personal development. And every, I don't, it doesn't matter who you come from, what teacher you listen to, they all will recommend Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Exactly. So what would you, what would you recommend to somebody who's having self-confidence issues at this moment in time in their life? That's a very common issue and it's a little bit tricky because people tend to beat up themselves so when they get told that they are the creator of their own reality that they can do everything and then it's hard for them to understand that that is not to make them feel guilty that's that is not for them to feel bad about what they have done but that they should actually think about what they can do and what they can achieve and what they actually want it all comes down to the the question what do you want it comes always down to that and when you set yourself on a goal and you, on a plan for achieving that and you maintain the habit or you create the idea of that and you visualize it a little bit more and you feel yourself into it you begin to increase your self esteem and your self confidence because you will realize that you can actually feel good about yourself. And that is ultimately what it is all about. It is your relationship with yourself. So it's not about the money. It's not about the things you want. It's not about the things you try to achieve. It's really the self value that you ascribe to yourself. It's really about how you view yourself, how you get in contact with your own inner power, inner potential, and how you reap into that and how you can, can tap into your desires. So that's what it's all about. And if you are, if you want to be very practical about it, you could start to find things that you appreciate about yourself, some aspects. Was there ever a situation where you thought, wow, I, I nailed that joke? Or was there ever a situation where you thought, wow, I really did that well, I really got that right? And if you reach for those memories and you relive them for a moment, you start to feel a certain way about yourself. And as you practice that, you begin to have access to more and more of these memories and also more, of more, more and more of these experiences in your future because you prime yourself to experience more of that. Wow, I love the way you've put that. So while, whilst we're, we're on that subject, so you've, you've dealt with that self-confidence issue now and then another roadblock hits you. The, the model, of what I, I would like to call the model of all roadblocks is the procrastination. So how do we deal with procrastination? Procrastination can be an um, issue in two ways. First, it, is, it can be a problem if your vision is not big enough, if you don't have that drive of what you want, if you don't feel that you should get up and you should do it or you should go after something or you have that idea of getting into action, then the reason is that you have not a why that is big enough you don't have that big vision you don't have that big thing in your heart that you want to do you see procrastination is only an issue if you are not connected to your own desires if you are connected to your own desires you won't talk about procrastination because you want to get there and so many people think they have to effort their way out of procrastination and they have to fight it and what they actually have to do is they have to actually align themselves with their desires to align themselves with what makes them feel good because that leads to what feels better and that leads to what they ultimately want so the action they should take to get to their goals or the action that people say that is needed to get to the goals is actually the action that will connect you to your vision to your purpose to what is truly important to you and once you are in alignment with that once you feel the presence of your vision once you feel in touch with your goals and you feel excited about that you feel the empowerment you feel like you can actually do it and the world is your oyster that's when you don't talk about procrastination because then you start living life as you truly want to live it yeah so how how do you tap into finding your your what napoleon hill will call your burning desire and that will be your why so Many people say, I don't know what I want to me, and I always disagree. They might not be aware of what they want in this very moment, but they have lived enough life. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. You have lived enough life to know what you want. 
And it doesn't necessarily have to start with the big goal you have to set for yourself in five years. Start with little ones. Start with something that you would like to have, that you would like to experience and focus on that. The problem most people have is not that they don't have goals. It is that they focus on what they don't want. So they might talk about making money or they might talk about starting their own business or getting the relationship or whatever they want. But what they actually talk about, and you can see it in their in their way, in the way they talk, in the way they sit, in the way they communicate to you, they actually talk about that they don't have these things and that they are frustrated or that they are desperate, that they feel the lack of things, that they feel lonely. And whenever they talk in that state of loneliness or lack of deserving, that is the state that you don't talk about your goals. You talk about the absence of your goals. But you can shift your mind from the absence of it to the presence of it. And once you focus on the presence of what you do want, that is when the magic happens. And it doesn't have to start in a big way. It can be an easy way. So it's all about momentum too. So when you have that idea of what you want and it's very general and not very specific, that's a good way to start focusing there and try to get more specific and feel yourself into it. But when you start to feel the absence of what you want, like, like you don't have the money, you feel the pressure to pay, to pay the bills, you can get very far down that road and to get into that negative spiral that feels worse and worse and worse, like you have no choice. And so if you don't feel like you have that burning desire, don't, don't fight it, but lean towards it. Your burning desire, your passion is actually your natural state of being. So you want to realize that it is not natural for us to just be at home and do nothing. We want to do things. We have all that drive to help people, to contribute, to focus on what we can do, to focus on how can we make people's lives better. And when we start to use that also for what we can give, that's when we are truly rich. We are only poor when we see ourselves as not having, but we can shift that in an instant when we see ourselves as giving. That's the key. Wow. The key is giving. And that's the bottom line. And that's, that's what I say to everybody, give and without expecting anything back because the, when you start doing that, it's, it's phenomenal. One thing that I've learned from Tony Robbins, and I've also learned from a very young man, which is Caleb Maddox. It's a 14-year-old young man who's doing some phenomenal things around the world. It says, give when you don't have. And when you don't have and you give without expecting back, that's when the magic happens. Exactly. And that's when you're going to get that shift. And thank you for touching on that, Mark. I love your, your concept on that. And this is one of the main reasons. I don't know why I didn't get you on my show a long time ago. But you know what? We saved the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the last of the show, but my show has been going on for a while, about six months now. And also one thing that I really love and I really work with in, with, my, with my clients and I do seminars on it is law of attraction. What is your views on the law of attraction and how it works? Well, the law of attraction is basically the thing that I've been studying for every day since, since that day I found about, out about the secret and it works. So deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever says law of attraction isn't working, it is working. And the fact that you say it's not working is part of why it's not working. And so you really have to come to the point where you understand it fully. Now the secret has, amazing information about it but it's limited information so it's not the full story so you have to understand that everything is vibrational we live in a universe of vibration that means science does understand it and you know everything is atoms and molecules and we don't see that we don't see energy waves for us this reality is rather solid so we think this is the way it is and we can only make changes by efforting and by bringing one thing to another place and then build something there with more stuff but what really happens is that we create through our focus through our thoughts and that by our thoughts we affect our reality and that is the basic principle that napoleon hill was talking about way back in 1936 so that's that's amazing 
that we haven't picked up on it more, so to say, that it has become mainstream. But that's really what works. So think about yourself as, and in the secret they describe it, as think about yourself as a magnet. And that's very powerful. So you, everything you experience in this moment, you have attracted. So you are in vibrational harmony with what you experience. If you want to change your life, if you want to change any subject, you have to achieve a different state of vibration. You have to achieve a different state of frequency. So how do you do that? You have to do that by the only way you can do that, and that is by noticing the way you feel, because your emotions tell you on what frequency you are. So if you feel good, that means you're in harmony with all your desires. That, mean you're, that means you're on the right path. That means you are on your way to what you want, and more importantly, what you want is on your way to you. And you're going to meet halfway. That's what Earl Nightingale talked about when he said, your goals move towards you as you move towards them. So that's really powerful. The whole universe shifts once you shift your attitude. So the magic word really is attitude, like Earl Nightingale said. And once you figure that out, that your attitude and your happiness is most importantly your priority number one, your life will be amazing. You don't need goals necessarily. You don't have to have this burning desire in the sense that you have this one thing to be a millionaire in five years and do whatever you can to do it. If you feel like that, that's okay. But you don't have to have that sense of certainty about your one single thing you want to achieve. You just have to make happiness your goal number one and you will see what comes next. You see, I said giving is the key and the reason giving is so important and makes you feel rich and helps you to become rich faster is because how do you feel when you can give about yourself? You can only give to others when you have it, when you have more, in it, more than enough. And if you have more than enough, you feel rich. And when you feel rich, then you are rich and you're on your way to riches. So that's how it works. So when we're talking about giving, what are you talking, what are we talking about? Giving money, giving materialistic things? What, what are we talking about, Mark? I know what we're talking about, what the audience <laughs> to know. <laughs> it depends on, on what it means to you. You want to have the feeling of giving. So you want to feel like you enriched somebody else. That can be time, that can be money, that can be effort, that can be love, that can be gratitude, that can be a small gesture, it can be a card, a thank you note. It does not matter what you give, but it is important that you get the feeling of giving, that you feel the, the joy of giving. And that's when you enrich others, and as you enrich others, you enrich yourself. Wow, excellent. The way I like to put that to, you, to people is to do something for, some, for one person every day, give to, put to somebody that without expecting back in any way you can give your time you can give your resources you can give your energy you can help any somebody in any way you don't have to have monetary terms to give somebody and that is the quickest way like mark said to change that vibration so the next question now will be what is your views on gratitude oh that's powerful Gratitude or appreciation is the most powerful state of being you can be in. Because once you reach gratitude, that is also the state of, of giving. If you can be grateful for the fact that you can give, wow, that's, that's powerful. You see, when you appreciate anything or be grateful for anything and you see the value of it, you focus on the presence of what you do want. So you have your mind on the presence of what you want. And what you want is this huge amount of so many things you can't even consider them. You have so many desires lined up and built up over the course of your life that you cannot discern or decipher all of them. But you can achieve the realization of the potential of that and of the joy of that by getting into the mode, into the zone where you live that and experience that moment to moment. So when you say, for example, what a wonderful day it is, how beautiful the sunshine is, and how you appreciate the weather, that leads to more things that you can appreciate. That leads to more of an awareness. You train your brain cells to recognize more of those things that you do appreciate, and then the world looks different. And actually, the world will be different as a result of that. 
but it takes that little leap of faith. It takes that trusting in your own abilities. It takes trust into the reality of your thoughts and into the solidity of your thoughts. And it takes a little bit belief into the flexibility of reality. Wow, flexibility of reality, guys. Get your notepads out, <laughs> sit down. Because Mark is drop, dropping some golden nuggets. He's been, he's a great coach. He, he's been one of my earliest coaches when I was going through that time of procrastination, when I was going through a hard time of not working. And what I like, what's really, what's annoying me a lot about coaches at this moment in time in the industry and in the personal development industry is that everybody's going out, going for clients, going for clients, going for clients. But how do you get a client who hasn't got the money, but yet they want to personally develop themselves? That's why I've done this show. Probably some, a lot of people that are in the situation that I was in a few years back, they can't afford your services. So we go back to you saying giving. So I'm giving them half an hour of your time and of my time. At this present moment in time, what I'm charging, what you're charging, a lot of people won't be able to afford that kind of money because we're working with business people, CEOs, managing directors, people that are professional. They know what they want in life. They're already successful, but they just need that little nudge to take them on the next level. So it's all about giving. It's all about giving, guys. And... What is your views on that, on the personal development industry at this moment in time? There's a lot of good stuff out there. Okay. So when you, when you start to have that desire and you want to get help, uh, some help is better than no help. So reach out, try to find the best information that you can and look for what resonates with you because there are so many different teachers and there are so many different students and not every teacher or not every coach is right for everybody. That's also why I want to talk to potential clients first and see how they are like before I make a decision whether I take that client on because I don't want to have that disappointment. And there's a difference between somebody who takes you higher as a coach or who you as a coach have to constantly bring back to that state where you are, where you hold the energy for them and then you can work with them a little bit. So there's different things that different people do. And I want to have the awareness that what I do with my clients works for them. So I want none the less, so only the best for my clients because I love my clients and I love that doing that work. And I only do that work if I can, if I know that I'm at my best. And so also something I've realized, I, I go to seminars every year, so many seminars <laughs> and what have started recently is I went to this one seminar everybody was excited about and I went there the first day and I realized that they have this huge sales show going on so they give a little bit of content and then they try to hypnotize you and manipulate the audience into buying their stuff and whenever somebody tells you and this is a good clue that you cannot be successful without that program or without that thing that they sell without that event you won't make it that is not the truth run as fast as you can <laughs> because if somebody tells you you need them in order to succeed that is not true that is a big lie and that is just fake so just go away from that and find somebody who is true who is honest who is sincere who feels authentic and who feels like you know has a lot of information that can benefit Oh, yeah thank you i have to applaud you mark for that thank you so much because so many people are not brave enough to speak about this and i'm so passionate no it wasn't yesterday it was i think it was monday somebody reached out to me and he said some my, my coach mentioned you to me so i spoke to this gentleman 21 years old he's in a really really bad place at this moment in time so they they're getting him to all these seminars they're helping him with these upcoming coaches and this guy's in a really bad place and they're getting him to write his gratitude list in the morning. Do 30 things that you're grateful for. Uh, write an affirmation that I'm going to make 10K by the end of the month. Nothing's going to switch in the head by you doing that because what's happened to him has become a chore. It's become homework. It hasn't become natural whatsoever. And I spoke to him. I gave him 
near enough two hours of my time, I'm all about giving as a coach. You know, you have to have those powerful conversations. And what makes Mark a great coach, he said it earlier, he loves his clients. This is the most important thing. And this guy reached out to me and I was like, this is so wrong, absolutely wrong. And the, the people that he works with are all NLP, master NLP practitioners. I rather don't know, I don't even want to touch NLP if I'm going to go to that level of taking people to their lowest point in order to buy it. And you, what people don't realize, that person is taking out the credit card. This person is using their rent money or their mortgage money for next month, but they don't care about these. They're sharks. They're absolutely sharks. And thank you so much, Mark, for, for touching on that. So we'll, we'll switch it up all of a sudden because we went a bit down on the negative side there. But people need to know what's wrong with the industry. There's loads of free content. There's Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor. Look at the greats. Look at the greats. They've been there for ages. Don't look at the people who's only been there two, two years, three years, just trying to make a name for themselves because... The greats will have loads of free content out there and that will really, really help you guys. And the next thing I want to move on to is vision boards. And he talked to us a bit about vision boards because I know people who's got, including myself before, my vision board was there for years and years, nothing was happening. But now I know the reason, the deep I've gone into my, my journey and now that I'm in the, in the level that I can teach people and I coach people, I know why my vision boards weren't working. So can you explain a bit about vision boards and how effective or how to make that work for you? So the biggest key to understand that it doesn't matter what process you talk about. So it doesn't matter whether you talk about the list of gratitude or the affirmations or all kinds of things, journaling. Um, one, one thing about journaling recently I saw on Facebook, a mother said to her daughter that who felt really bad because of something that happened in school and she sent her journaling and after journaling she came back and felt so much worse so much more darker bad there <laughs> so and then she asked for help on facebook and i thought that is because people don't understand how these processes work they have heard about them like the vision board or like affirmations and then they try to implement them without having the proper understanding why they work. So I always want to make clear what is the principle? Why does this process work? What does this process? Because once you understand the underlying principle, you have actually guidance that tells you, do, am I doing it right or am I doing it wrong? So vision boards can be really good if you use them in a way that feels good to you. So the most important thing is you have to understand you have to reach that point where you feel like you live the life that you want to live. And you have to get to that feeling place right here, right now. So you cannot say, okay, in two weeks, I'm going to be happier. It doesn't work. So these two weeks will go by and you will feel the same. Nothing has changed. And the reason is Everything you want is because you think having that or experiencing that, being that, will make you feel better in every single case. But the key is, and how life works, is that once you achieve that feeling, you don't need these things anymore. You don't feel the need of these experiences, things, or, or state of beings. And once you have that point within you and you've reached that successfully where you feel like yes i live the life i truly want to live here and now you don't have to have everything you want but you can have that feeling here and now that's when the things will come to you that's when the opportunities will show up that's when you see the inspired actions to take that's when the success will come big time but you cannot reverse it so you cannot say, okay, I make this vision board to make me feel a certain way. And you look at it and you're getting frustrated because you look at the damn thing every day and it doesn't happen. And then you get frustrated and angry with yourself and you shoot yourself in the foot. So what you want to do is you want to use it effectively and creatively. You want the process of making it something that is fun, that you love doing, that you enjoy, not because this will make it happen, but because you enjoy imagining how your life can unfold and what you will have once you live there. So when you play the game that you feel like you are on this vacation or you live in that house and you see yourself there, 
that can be a powerful reminder and a powerful tool to focus more on the presence of what you do want. But when you just have it there and you feel frustrated about it and you've built it and you thought, okay, now this should work. I will look at this every day for 10 minutes. Oh God, when do I have time for this? I don't know. I don't want to do this, but I stare at it anyway. Then you're not, then you're not doing the work. Then you just get frustrated about it. And it's like that with every process. So you have to understand your true nature, who you are, who your higher self is, what your guidance system tells you, what your own emotions tell you. And whenever you are in that point, everything you do, all the processes, they can work like magic, but you have to understand them. So the same thing is true for affirmations, which is so misunderstood. If you tell yourself a lie and you read it again and again, and usually you, tell, you take an, affirm, an affirmation from somebody you don't know really, and that affirmation has no meaning to you. So you don't feel anything when you say it. It doesn't give you an emotional anything. <laughs> and you just, you just read it and nothing happens because it's not there. It's not in your heart. And to get it in your heart, you have almost to create your own affirmations and to find that because it's about the emotion. It's not about the words. It's about the emotions and not the words, guys. Note this down. It's Mark Britzker's words. So guys, you've, you've got so much value for Mark today and he's an amazing gentleman. And on affirmation, it's all about customizing your affirmation to yourself. And when you reach that level that Mark says, you don't even need the affirmation. I've still got one affirmation that I use, Mark. Only my good will come to me. That's wonderful. That's the only affirmation. I, uh, I don't even have to read it anymore. And then when you wake up in the morning and you're in that state of limbo, I've got my morning rituals that I do that raises me to my, to my vibration. And that's, that's the only affirmation you need. But don't be going on, on, online looking at what people are writing. I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm going to make a million dollars. You're never going to make a million dollars, guys, because you're, you're focusing on what someone else wants. You're focusing on what your neighbor wants. You're focusing on what Mark and Newtown wants. It's not what you want. You have to focus on your heart. What's in your heart? Go with the heart, you can't go wrong. Like the show says, straight from the heart. The last final question, we're running out of time, will be, give, can you give us three, three steps or three bullet points that could change somebody's life right now that are going through, through a hard time and they want to switch, get that switch away and get that positive vibration? The first thing I'd recommend is meditation. So set aside 15 minutes each morning, ideally, where you just focus on your breathing in and out and count your breathing in your mind within and out, in and out. And whenever your mind wanders, and it will, return back to your breathing. Release the, the thought gently and return back to, and focus on your breathing. So that will raise your vibration because your natural state of vibration is high. So you don't have your effort your way from the bottom of despair and desperation to excitement and bliss. Bliss and excitement, passion, that burning desire is your natural state of being. And the only reason you don't feel it is because you have put up so much things in your way, so much stuff in your way, on your path that keeps you down. So you have been trained to feel negatively. And what meditation does, it releases those negative blocks, those negative pieces of resistance, and you just return to your natural high over the course of your life. And things begin to move much quicker, much faster. So you will realize opportunities. You will have successful meetings with clients so much easier and more effortlessly because you have practiced that higher frequency. The second thing I would do is I would try to think more about the things that I want. So how do you want to live? What is it that you would like in your life? How would you like to live? What is your ideal place to live? Stretch your mind a little bit from that idea of you have limited options or you can have only so much time to live. You want to stretch your ability to see possibilities. And so that is really the key to ask yourself, what do you want? Ask yourself that more over the course of a day and you see that there are different segments, that there are different things that you can do 
that will make things much more pleasant and much more fun and that there are actually things that you haven't thought about earlier. You see, you want to train your mind to focus on the presence of what you do want and you want to unlearn to focus on the absence of what you do want. And so you cannot stop focusing on the absence without doing something else. So you, and the something else that you want to do is you want to focus on the presence of what you want. So on the dreams, on the goals, sometimes you can get frustrated. So whenever that happens, return to what we've talked about earlier, gratitude, the most important thing. So be grateful, be, be appreciative, love things, love what you love and find things to love and look for these things. So that is the most important thing, whether it's in your future or whether it's in your now, find things that you feel good about. And the third thing is, I think actually is get a coach because it doesn't matter whether you get me or Jam or who is out there who resonates with you, but get somebody who gives you some input, who knows their stuff and who knows how your mind works and who knows how you can achieve the next level so that you are not in that place where you feel like you have no choice. So many people feel stuck and they keep listening to the personal development material, but they keep listening to it like they want to be entertained and they want to get something from it, but they don't change anything. And in order for anything to change, you have to change. And something has to change definitely. So it doesn't just happen from listening. Listening is good. It's a good start. And if you can't afford a coach, get as much information as you can. There's so much great stuff out there, but sooner or later you will realize that a coach can really bring you to that level where you master the things you want to master. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much. If you want to change, you have to change. Come on guys, thank you so much, Mark. Mark, how do, you, how do people get in touch with you if they want to speak to you or possibly seeing what you're about? Um, they can go to my website at www.mbinspirations.com or they can shoot me an email just at service at mbinspirations.com. So that's the easiest way. I'm also on Facebook, so you find me there. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you. I like, I'd like to offer everybody who listens in a free coaching session of 90 minutes. So if you're interested, if you listen to this, just say you've seen me on straight from the heart and I'd be glad to talk to you. Thank you so much for being an awesome guest, Mark. Thank you so much for the value that you've given and the universe blesses you. And this is all about giving thank you again. So guys, I would like you to remember that Mark, what Mark spoke about, do those three steps. If you're stuck in a rut, if you don't know how to change those vibrations, have a look at what Mark's spoken about because when I spoke to Mark a while ago, I was in a really terrible place myself and that switched that thought in my head. And look where we are today, the both of us on this level of speaking. Thank you so much for being an amazing guest, Mark. I'm straight from the heart, Yuta Marmaraz. I'm gonna sign off now. As always, I'll say this to you guys, live well with one another because if we don't, what's the point? Have a great day, have a great afternoon, have a great evening wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now.